A new WikiLeaks cable release last week revealed that BP had a blowout in an oil well just 18 months before the disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. According to the cables, a gas leak occurred on a BP oil rig in Azerbaijan back in September of 2008 thanks to, quote, a bad cement job, end quote. The same suspected cause behind the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico that killed 11 people and resulted in the worst ecological disaster in our nation's history. The cables also report the BP kept secret exactly what happened, leading to the same problem a year and a half later in the Gulf. One journalist reportedly traveled to Azerbaijan, not reportedly, recently, excuse me, traveled to Azerbaijan to get the scoop on what exactly BP is up to over there. That journalist, Greg Pallast, New York Times bestselling author and BBC correspondent, joins me now via Skype from Tobago. Greg, welcome. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas. Well, thank you, Greg. Happy I, holidays. I'm allowed a break. There you go. There you go. Uh, and, and good on you for it. Um, why Azerbaijan? Because that's where they were, uh, BP was slicking uh, the people. The, yes, just as WikiLeaks uh, came out with uh, mention uh, from the U.S. State Department that it looked like BP had a blowout that they never really reported to anyone. I'd actually gotten tips about this about six months ago. So rather than, you know, WikiLeaks, uh, it's, they're great, but they just kind of throw the stuff out there. I said, that that's, this is too dangerous. I got to find out myself. So I took a uh, crew for a couple major networks, worldwide networks, and did an investigation getting uh, witnesses, et cetera, and f trying to find out exactly what happened with BP and, and Azerbaijan. And uh, it didn't, uh, apparently, the welcome committee was not too welcoming. Yeah. And, and I ended up, um, uh, the, the three flavors of uh, police were there. Uh -huh. We had the, uh, uh, the military police uh, in their old uh, puke green Russian uniforms. And we had the, uh, uh, the secret police who wear no uniforms. And then we had the BP police that wear little black uh, tunics and little oil wells on their... Um, on their badges Seriously? and uh, so BP put under arrest. Yeah, yeah, you, you have, yeah. BP has its own police force there. Uh, it actually kind of has its own president. And while I'm not going to tell you too much about what we're finding, because one of the things is it is a police state, mm -hmm. very much so. This uh, Azerbaijan, in case most you don't know Thank you for where the heck my it is, it's on Obviously, the I don't. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's on the, ca you know, uh, Americans actually tend not to know um, a nation until the 82nd Airborne arrives Perfect. there. Its capital is Baku. It used to be part of the Soviet Union. Yes. Those were the days of relative freedom and prosperity. Uh, then the dark night uh, descended and the, it became an independent state. Instead of a communist, godless state, it became an Islamic republic. Uh, and the guy who was head of the KGB uh, under communist rule, uh, suddenly became the head of the uh, of the country uh, otherwise. Now, the thing is that he wasn't elected. There was a very good democratically uh, elected leader, and the information we're looking at is what is the role of BP in overthrowing the democratically elected leader. All I can tell you is that when uh, the coup d'etat occurred, the democratically elected leader was overthrown, BP was suddenly given a monopoly contract. It was called the contract of the century, one of the biggest oil contracts ever given out by a nation to control and monopolize the Caspian Sea oil off of Baku. And so what started out as an investigation of, um, you know, a blowout or a rig has now become an investigation of an oil company led coup d'etat. Amazing. And that's where we're into. And that's why I can't then. That's, you know, I was busted. I got out, obviously. Uh, I'll have to tell you that story later when the film comes out. Right. We have, we have about a minute left, Greg. What's the carry home message from this for Americans uh, with regard to BP drilling in our Gulf of Mexico? Well, there's two things. One, there's the oil pollution. There's also the political pollution. You see this with uh, Bobby Jindal, who is the uh, you know, governor of Louisiana, who's basically Mr. Oil Company, despite all his uh, jumping up and down. He's been uh, the oil company's uh, glove puppet. You see it in Azerbaijan. If you think that they do anything different in Azerbaijan than they do in Mississippi and Louisiana, you're, you're dead wrong. I was down investigating there as well, and it's kind of the same thing, corruption bribery, um, and that's the price of oil. Amazing. Pollution and pollution of the political system. There you go. Greg Pallas, thanks, uh, and gregpallas.com. Greg, thanks so much for your reporting. You're the best, Tom. Thank you. Great talking with you.
Greg's reporting shows how the Azerbaijan government is under the complete control of BP. The same thing can be said of Nigeria, where Shell Oil has successfully placed corporate officials in every ministry of government. A few weeks back, Nigeria lashed out against their corporate overlords by indicting Dick Cheney and his company Halliburton for bribery. Just last week, though, Halliburton passed out a bit more money to the Nigerians, a quarter billion dollars, $250 million. With that money in their pockets, the Nigerians said they'd drop the charges against Dick Cheney for bribing people within the Nigerian government. A bribe to pay off bribery charges. Business as usual in governments bought and paid for by giant transnational oil corporations.